Good afternoon and welcome to the New York Forum. Recording in progress. Press Center uh, preview of Climate Week NYC. My name is Daphne Stavropoulos and I'm today's moderator. It's a pleasure to introduce our speakers, Adam Lake, Britton Jones, and Jacqueline Tran. Adam uh, Lake serves as the head of Climate Week NYC at the Climate Group. Britton Jones is the chairman and CEO of Next Events Media Group, the owners and producers of the Nest Summit, one of the events during Climate Week. And Jacqueline Tran is the Energy and Sustainability Manager at the Javits Center. This briefing is on the record. The views expressed by briefers not affiliated with the Department of State or US government are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Department of State or US government. We ask that you share um, a, your story for, that you publish um, from this briefing. Follow, following our speaker's opening remarks, I will open the floor for questions. If you have a question, go to the participant field and raise your virtual hand and wait for me to call on you. When called on, please enable both your audio and your video and identify yourself and your outlet. And with that, it's my pleasure to turn it over to today's first briefer, Adam Lake. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Daphne. Um, really great to be here and nice to, nice to meet all of you. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I was just saying um, while we were chatting before, before you joined the room that it, it, we're quite fortunate that this is happening today because there's a few things I've been wanting to tell a lot of people for a long time that I haven't been able to that we're just releasing now. So you definitely have some fresh news. Uh, I mean, one thing is we are uh, launching a, a mobile phone app to allow people, whether they're in New York or around the world, access the over 520 events that are going to be happening throughout the week. So it's going to be the most inclusive, engaging and global Client Week NYC there's ever been. So it's a free app. We didn't know we'd get it in on time, so we've not been telling people about it, but it's now done and it's in the App Store. Um, so that's one nice thing to say. And the other thing quickly before I just give a bit more of a broader overview of Client Week NYC, um, is we are delighted to announce that um, we have been working with the seven biggest late night TV talk shows um, and next Wednesday evening, um, they will all be doing climate night. So they'll be devoting the show um, to sustainability and climate issues in support of Climate Week NYC. Um, so all the people you've heard of, James Corden, Jimmy Kimmel, um, Ed, all of them, it's going to be fantastic. So that's, that is genuine new news. I think only the New York Times has managed to just catch on to that. I've not seen any coverage yet. Um, let me just talk a bit about Climate Week NYC overall. So um, Climate Week NYC is run by Climate Group. We're an international um, non-profit uh, with offices in London and New York uh, and India. And the reason why we do Climate Week NYC is as an organization, as an NGO, we work with well, businesses, businesses and governments. Um, and we feel that um, it's really important to ensure that businesses and governments create change so that consumers have choice uh, at the ballot box and the products that they buy. And so we do this through programs throughout the year, but Climate Week NYC is the platform where we actually force people to say like, this is the week to make the announcement. And that's always been our history. And you will see for our program and I will share in the pack you'll get, we've got some of the biggest names in business um, speaking, um, from you know the, the CEOs and presidents and chairs of, of, of most of the biggest organizations in the world that are doing something in this space. We're also working with some of the most significant political leaders um, kicking off on our opening day, which is Monday morning from 10 a.m. Um, where we have, you know, sort of, it feels like half the cabinet of the White House are going to be there. We've got the president of the EU Commission coming along, the COP president, of course. So we, we, we've got that going on and that's fantastic. And I can send lots of details of specific names. The, um, the thing that really excites me the most though about this year um, after the terrible two years we've had with, with, with coronavirus and restrictions and all sorts of things going on is the, the beating heart of Climate Week NYC, the range of events that take place in New York and around the world. Um, it's, it's grown to be a record-breaking year for us this year. We're looking at 520 events as of today. It was 500 yesterday. Who knows what it will be tomorrow? You know, spread across 10 different categories. A lot of them are digital. Some of them are physical. Um, the vast majority of them are you know, free to access, open to all. Every facet of this you know, conversation is going to be explored, and people at whatever level can engage with it. 
And I think this is something really important because the public is so interested now in climate issues and they want to know what they can do. And I think learning more is the most important thing that people can do. And so obviously we're going to answer lots of questions later and, and, and that, but I just want to sort of say for, for, for me, the most interesting, exciting thing and a big piece of advice if you work on a particular issue is exploring the events listings, look at what's going on. That's the real part. That's what's, that's what's happening. Um, and we have our own events program in the week with the Hub Live. It's 18 top events. We're bringing together the 2000 top climate leaders for that. We've got Britain here from, um, from, from Next, who's doing the Nest Summit. Um, and that's just a fantastic program of events that we're working with. We're so proud to work with them. There's so much happening. So, um, yeah, I think I've given enough of a spiel about the overview piece there, and I'm really looking forward to answering any questions people have on any of those specific parts. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, Britton? Thank you. Thank you, Daphne, and thank you, Adam. Um, we are so excited uh, for the upcoming week. I am uh, Britton Jones. I'm the, the founder and CEO of Next Events Media Group, and we are the proud producers of the Nest Summit. Um, I'll go over just a few specifics in the beginning here um, to let you know that we are running September uh, 21st and 22nd. We are so um, pleased to be the official event partner uh, of Climate Week NYC. Um, Adam and his group are just fantastic to work with. And the location of our event is um, the, I, the Javits Center. In fact, it's the newly opened expansion um, part of the Javits Center, the new building of the Javits Center, um, which is just an iconic symbol of sustainability in New York and one of the greenest convention centers. Uh, in the country. Our event, the Nest Summit, is being produced uh, in a hybrid form, uh, in person and virtually. And we think this dual production is really key uh, because it enables us to connect both B2B, business to business, and also large B2C, business to consumer audiences. Um, our in-person attendance, um, which we're requiring, both proof of vaccination and mask wearing to attend um, will be primarily uh, B2B, business to business, where leaders are going to come together um, to uh, share best practices, spark ideas, and form new collaborations. And again, our, our digital distribution of all of our content is key to connecting um, climate conscious consumers. And when you think about it at the end of the day, we are all consumers. Um, and I think we're one of the things that we're trying to do with the Nest Summit is get people to think differently about their consumption and get them to realize, get all of us to realize that when we spend our dollars, uh, we have a chance to, um, to vote and to contribute to companies that are doing uh, good things to advance in sustainability and accelerate uh, climate action. So again, um, we really are trying to get um, the connection of people to purchasing with a purpose. The mission of our, of our conference or our summit is to convene uh, true innovators and thought leaders from some of the nation's most progressive companies, NGOs, government, academia, research communities, um, and to uh, convert this exchange of ideas and conversation into climate action. Our uh, conference um, is very robust. It is a very robust week, as Adam just uh, alluded to, or, or detailed for us. Um, we have, uh, we will be featuring almost 70 speakers uh, in our two days. Um, and our program really divides into four main themes. Uh, clean energy and transportation, evaluating climate risk and impact investing, uh, industry change makers, and then a really robust part of the program centers around cl climate arts. Um, so much of the coverage of the climate crisis in the US in particular, um, and I don't know so much about the rest of the world, but in the US, so much of the coverage of the climate crisis is really full of gloom and doom. Um, dire situations, and we are. Um, we, we, um, this is a very serious situation. Um, and while we think it's really important 
uh, to follow the science. The problem with this type of coverage is that it makes the climate crisis seem insurmountable and is truly overwhelming to people and leaves them wondering what it is that they can do to make a difference. And the fact of the matter is we can all do uh, our part and collectively we really can make a significant difference. And this is really the aim of our conference program. Um, our sessions at the Nest Summit are very solutions oriented and they're gonna examine some of the most pressing environmental issues in the US and, and underscore the urgency of a lot of these um, environmental issues. But we're also going to provide solutions that are viable and can be, uh, can be embraced in, uh, today. So the goal of the summit at the end of the day is to educate our audiences uh, that solutions are available and inspire their adoption and prompt climate action. Widespread climate action is really, um, widespread uh, implementation of these solutions is really critical. And together again, we can make a difference and this is vital to avoiding uh, the truly devastating consequences of unchecked climate change. Um, in pulling together our event, um, uh, we have, you know, collaboration is, is such a key element of effectively addressing and solving the climate crisis. And um, as Adam knows well, and Jackie too, uh, we have been collaborating extensively um, in preparing for the NEST Summit. We, we fully embrace SDG 17, and we are very pleased to be working with so many uh, true sustainability leaders. Um, we have over 20 sponsors, again, about 70 speakers and 20 sponsors and supporting organizations. And it's only through their generous support and collaborative efforts that we are able to make the content of the Nest Summit available on a complementary basis. And that's both in person and online. And we think that this is really, really important. Knowledge of climate solutions um, cannot be limited to just the affluent. Uh, we are in a code red situation in the defining uh, challenge of our lifetime. And this is a time for an all hands on deck approach. Uh, we need to inspire widespread adoption of solutions around the world and we really need to do it now. So that's what um, we feel uh, next week is really all about. Next week and, and for uh, the weeks beyond. I, I will say that our content digitally will be available um, online, uh, both on our own website um, and uh, part of our collaboration, great collaboration with Adam and the Climate Week NYC um, people is that our content will also be available uh, through their digital channels, uh, their, their YouTube channel and their Facebook watch program. And we're really grateful for that. Thank you. And um, I'll pass the floor to, to Jackie. Thanks, Britton. So the Javits Center is really excited to be hosting events like the Nest Summit during Climate Week NYC. We really look forward to another year of accelerating conversations for climate action ahead of COP26. To Britton's point, we have seen record-breaking heat waves, overwhelming wildfires around the world, and increasing frequency and intensity of hurricanes like Ida that devastated the Gulf Coast and the Northeast of the US. And so we are seeing that the consequences of the climate crisis continue to really grow more serious. But you know, there is that glimmer of hope and that optimism that we as the Javits Center would like to echo um, to Britain's point. We are uh, the founding partner with the Nest Summit, um, an event that really brings together thought leaders, innovators, and experts to spark new ideas that will help tackle the climate crisis. And as a venue, we've always seen ourselves as a model for sustainability. And through that model, we hope to provide scalable solutions that can create more optimism and, and more climate action around venues around the world and with other organizations too. So I'd like to go through some of those scalable solutions now. Since our renovation um, in 2014, and now with the recent completion of our 1.2 million square foot building expansion, we've really demonstrated how humans can have a positive impact on the role that they play in the built environment. And 
through that mimicking ecological models, we've seen a lot of success with kind of taking the best practices from nature herself um, and really applying that into what a green building can be for the community around it. Um, one of the things that really just got our sustainability program going um, when we went through our renovation was this 6.75 acre green roof that we have that has now turned into a wildlife sanctuary. We do studies with New York City Audubon, Drexel University, Columbia University, Cooper Union, you name it. Um, they've come here and we've really taken uh, in stride kind of pointing to what this green roof can do, taking the metrics from that and sharing it out. And, and now we see that um, New York City has itself uh, created a local law where new construction of certain buildings need to now have a green roof component or a solar component. So that has been done as well with our bird friendly glass facade. Um, we used to be the number one bird killer in New York City, funnily enough, um, and now we have decreased that collision rate by 95% and plus. Um, so we're really showing that, you know, these things, it's not always perfect, but if we find a problem, we see the solution, we can make it happen through, through our model. Um, in addition to being a wildlife sanctuary for our birds and our bats and our five thriving beehives on the roof, paired with energy efficient rooftop units, um, we've seen energy reductions by 26% for the building. So through the energy management program, um, we've started to see what those uh, benefits can be. And now on the newly expanded rooftop where the Nest Summit will be housed, um, we have a new type of green roof, which we're really excited about. It's a state-of-the-art uh, event space, and it includes a one-acre farm, an orchard with New York State apples, some pear trees, a pollinator meadow. I was just up there today. I already saw some monarchs and bees and all different kinds of pollinators really gravitating to it. Um, and we have a shade garden there as well. Uh, one really great feature that is not uh, necessarily visible, but is really exciting is that we have two underground cisterns that capture and treat rainwater. All of the rainwater that falls on the roof gets captured and treated in these underground cisterns and then is pumped back up to the roof to irrigate the entire rooftop terrace. Um, so what that means is that we're reducing potable water for irrigation by at least 50%, and we will measure those with uh, different partners in the future. Um, we're also decreasing runoff by 25%. Um, that really helps with uh, the combined sewer overflow issue that we see in New York City when we have rain or, say, hurricanes. Um, and then another project that is exciting um, on our rooftops is a solar installation that we've been working on with Siemens and the New York Power Authority. This will be the largest solar installation in Manhattan to date when it is complete. We will break the ground very soon. It includes 3,000 solar panels that is distributed across 34 custom canopies that sit over our heating and cooling units on our green roof, and two larger solar arrays on the northeast extension that will provide 1.61 megawatts of solar energy and 3.5 megawatts of battery energy storage. This equates to over 2 million kilowatt hours of clean electricity generated in the first year alone. So for comparison, since that's a lot of numbers, um, one megawatt can power about 500 to 1,000 homes, and the average American home uses about 877 kilowatt hours per month. Um, for the center, we're equating that to about 10% of our uh, usage. Uh, the solar power will also be integrated into our microgrid. So we have a microgrid that has become a big part of our resiliency program for climate action. We have generators there that, when needed, can allow the Javits Center to be off-grid for up to six consecutive days should we experience any power shutdowns. This also provides resiliency for the shows that are in the building. Um, and in tandem, we have always been enrolled in what is called a demand response program. Basically, we're connected to the Times Square grid. Um, it is an overloaded grid and say during a very hot day in the summer when AC is in high demand, um, that grid can be really overloaded and it's hard for the distributing um, power organizations to really determine how much they need to uh, distribute to those that need it. Um, so we've always been enrolled in this program. What we do is we uh, shed our load or we curb our usage as needed to relieve the grid. 
Um, and now with the microgrid, we can actually transfer all of our power that we're using to the generators. And now with the solar installation and the battery energy storage system, we are integrating the solar energy into the microgrid so that when we transfer, part of that can actually be clean energy. Um, it will be the first battery energy storage system of its kind to be enrolled in the Con Edison demand response program in the city. So we're really excited about that. Um, if you want to mo hear more about this program, um, Siemens and others will be having a panel discussion. Our CEO from the Javits Center, Alan Steele, will be speaking as well. Um, so you are invited to attend that session. And we also have a tour um, that I will be leading with Siemens um, to show the canopy prototype. So we have one prototype that has been constructed on our green roof and it will show that. We'll look over the microgrid area um, and then we'll end up on the farm so you can kind of see all of the, the blossoms up there. And our energy programs are really working to meet the aggressive targets for decarbonization and clean electricity um, set forth by New York's Climate Act as well as what we're moving towards um, for the nation. We are living proof that the impact that venues and buildings can have on green infrastructure and green economies is possible. Our projects represent smart, scalable solutions for climate action. We also have many simple initiatives that can have dramatic impacts for those who are looking for more simpler ones. Um, for example, our Javits Cares donation program. It diverts uh, thousands of exhibit materials from the landfill annually to local nonprofit organizations. These are materials that may be intended for a single use. Um, and rather than throwing it in the trash, we are repurposing it to organizations who need it. So over 6,000 items amounting more, to more than 35,000 pounds of various furniture items, including tables, seating, lighting, storage equipment, have been donated to our community partners. And with the help of our catering provider Cult Cultivated, we have also rescued nearly 100,000 pounds of food to local organizations who are fighting food insecurity and food waste. So as we embark on our journey together to tackle the climate crisis, we know that we cannot do it alone. Collaboration, the sharing of ideas, innovation, and even morale boosting is needed now more than ever. The Javits Center has always seen itself as a place where people can gather to share ideas, move thoughts forward, and drive change. The Nest Summit is an example of just that for climate action, and Climate Week is just that ahead of COP26. And the events industry itself will continue to be a key tool for meetings and marketplaces as we work on solving this problem. Earlier this month, the Global Association of the Exhibition Industry, or UFI, announced the Net Zero Carbon Events Initiative, which is hosted by the Joint Meeting Meetings Industry Council and supported by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. This initiative aims to move the events industry to net zero by 2050. A pledge will be ready for COP26 in November. The Javits Center is proud to be an active participant in this initiative and an early adopter. And we're excited to partner with show organizers, general contractors, venues, and other organizations in the events industry to discover the best path forward to net zero. We look forward to continuing conversations in person and virtually. We know how valuable meeting, networking, and inspiration can be to shaping the conversations and solving problems. So thank you. And we look forward to seeing you at the Nest Summit and Climate Week NYC. Jacqueline, thank you so much. Um, and, and Britton and to Adam so much for your opening remarks. We really appreciate them. I'm gonna open the floor to questions. Um, if you have a question, please raise your virtual hand and wait for me to call on you. Um, and also when you're called on, please enable both your audio and your video. And with that, I might Daphne, if I may, just while people are feverishly sure. writing down uh, questions. Just want to make one um, quick point, which I hope is will be of use to to, to the press on this on this call. Um, just throughout that, which is really interesting, I have like an emergency thing on my phone that only goes off when I have like a key announcement from the team. So just wanted to impress upon the people in the room. Um, I, this is on the record, so I can't say what the announcements are, but I'd say check out who's speaking at the opening ceremony 
um, on, on Monday morning. Check out who is on the agenda for the Hub Live. It's all on the Climate Week NYC website. You're going to see big names. A lot of those names are saying very, very significant things that mean a huge amount in terms of how this country and how the world is going to be able to um, the, reach the targets. So there is lots of genuine big news that is happening. Um, I'd say one of the, I'm going to share my email with, with, with Daphne after this. I think you're getting a press pack. Um, if you are physically in New York, there is some capacity left, but we closed this uh, on Friday for physical attendance at the opening ceremony on the Monday morning. Um, this is not for publication, but for you, I can let you know it's at the Time Center in New York City, should you wish to attend. Um, some of the speakers will be digital, some will be physical. There's an opportunity to speak to speakers there as well. We have a press room. Um, if you want to virtually attend and see these things live and get the news first as well, through that email address, that can be arranged also. Um, so just wanted to say from a, from a press point of view, there are going to be things happening next week that are significant and we're really happy to help make sure we get those stories to you. Thank you so much, Adam. I do have a question that's come in um, via the chat. Um, unfortunately, uh, one of our journalists had to um, leave a little bit early, but the question she poses, um, it's from Kemi Osukoya. Um, and she wants to know um, how the agenda for Climate Week next week will um, reflect, um, and it's already been mentioned in some of your remarks, um, recent climate events, including Hurricane Ida. And so if there's uh, a specific part of the agenda that is going to um, factor uh, recent events in like that. I'm, ha I'm happy just to kick off on that one, and I'm sure Brittany and Jackie have, have, have stuff to respond to it as well. Um, I think it's a constant conversation in the climate world between um, sort of resilience and adaptation. You know, do we try and stop climate change or do we just build bigger walls around the city so it doesn't flood us when it happens? Um, so even before Ida, that's a really big part of the conversation. And it's the part of the conversation in terms of the people responsible for planning and preparing um, cities, um, states, regions, countries for this. Um, but it's also part of the conversation. We've created a environmental justice um, program as part of the main themes, because actually often it's the, it, it's the local communities that get damaged the most and have the least say. So we've been investing a lot of time and effort in trying to ensure that these groups have a voice, have a platform, are provided help we're working with Facebook, Facebook directly to support organizations so that they have an audience as well. So I, I'll keep the answer short, but I just say like it is going to be a thread that comes to a lot of things. And there are a lot of people from, um, you know, who work you know, from the White House, um, secretaries of state, various different departments who will be talking to this um, as well. I will also mention uh, that this subject will be addressed at the Nest Summit on Wednesday afternoon. Um, Alan Steele, the president and CEO of the Javits Center and also head of NYC and Companies um, Sustainability Council will be holding a fireside chat uh, with Janie Bideshi, who has run the um, New York, uh, the Office of um, uh, Resilience from the mayor's office uh, from the city of New York. And she is also one of the, um, has been nominated to be one of the top officials in NOAA by the Biden administration. And she will be uh, addressing resilience, um, uh, the resilience programs of New York City and the needs for resilience across the country uh, in this fireside chat. That sounds wonderful. Uh, uh, Adam, I was wondering if you could share the themes of uh, Climate Week. Sure. I see. So I don't embarrass myself. I'm going to actually put them some highlights on, on my page just so, because I know full well that I'm going to miss one out and it's going to be one which will be a terrible one to miss out. So I'm, I'm going to, um, we've got, so we've got built environment, energy, environmental justice, transport, finance, sustainable living, nature, policy, industry, and food. Um, and a lot of those, um, a lot of those themes, we, we, we brought in partners um, because, you know, the climate group 
works a lot with government and we work a lot with business, but there's some important areas of this conversation where we're not experts and don't pretend to be, and this game's about collaboration. So for example, environmental justice, um, we are working with a, a fantastic organization called the Solutions Project, who look at the issues relating to environmental justice and, and use the program to help curate their own events, um, provide a platform for others. And, and I'd say on the website, you'll see some really interesting, um, some really interesting people. We're talking before this call about Sangavain, probably one of the biggest companies you might not have heard about, but they're like 500 years old and they build everything. And, you know, their, their, their chair um, is a real leader, was one of the driving forces behind Paris. You know, so a company like that can make $45 billion a year company can make a massive difference when it comes to built environment. So there's some really interesting folks getting involved this year, um, and I definitely um, suggest exploring exploring a bit. If I'm not mistaken, Britain, you had um, raised SDG 17, and you know, it, I'm sure it's I know it's it's um, uh, no coincidence that. The Climate Week NYC happens to be during the same week as High Level Week of the UN General Assembly. So um, the question is for 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 Britain or for Adam. Um, are there key messages um, that you would like to come out of um, the Nest Summit um, and or Climate Week to world leaders who will be visiting in person or virtually? Britain, do you want to take that? <laughs> I'm happy, to, I'm happy to jump in there. It, it, I mean, um, it's an interesting one this year for obvious reasons. International travel is very tough um, and it's the same issue for COP26 who are going through this right now. Um, now, what can we share and what can't we share? I, I believe it's very likely the president is going to be in town. Um, I believe it is known that um, that the British Prime Minister and other uh, senior officials, including the COP president, Alex Sharma, are also going to be in town. Um, there are people who um, will be doing stuff virtually. I gather that the UN is, is only going to be doing the main event on the Monday um, as a live in-person event. They are not doing physical events as they do in a normal year. Um, so the pavilion and things are not going to happen. You mentioned we always have, you know, Climate Week runs alongside the UN General Assembly. We do that on purpose um, because we don't want people flying to New York specifically for Climate Week NYC. Um, so we do it that week because the right people will be in town anyway. Um, key messages, I think um, it's, it's, it's going to be about COP, I think. You know, we had, to, we had to delay COP and then there's calls now for it to be delayed again. And I think it's just really important that we can't keep just sort of saying, let's have this conversation another time. Um, and we need to make sure that whatever circumstances we're in, we're really, really driving forward these decisions. Now, a lot of company, companies, countries have, have made some really interesting commitments and a lot of companies next week will be making some interesting commitments. I think the question next week is this is the final stock take where people can actually say, is COP26 going to be a success? Is it going to be meaningful? Are people going to talk about Glasgow in the same way that they talk about Paris? Or do we have a problem that we seriously need to address? So I think it's great that you know we're having some physical events. It's fantastic to do that. It's fantastic also that there's so much digital going on so everyone can be engaged. But I think that the article that I want to read at the end of the week is what does this mean for COP26? And I very much hope it's positive but more ambition needed but i'm not the writer in this room so i guess you guys are in charge of that bit i'd just like to add adam and that, that was great and i'd just like to add um that it is very clear abundantly clear that the climate crisis is not on hold um, and that it is really important that we move forward with this with this week um, both in person where we can and, and virtually um, when in-person attendance is not possible. But the, the messages need to be heard. They need to be delivered and heard. And just say how encouraging it is um, for us to have a president who is now, President Biden, who is now talking about the urgency 
uh, of um, reacting to, to climate change. And for him to say yesterday, as he was touring a lot of the devastation on the West Coast, um, that uh, we know what we have to do. We need to muster the courage and the will to do it. And I think, again, um, that's going to be a big part of the messaging uh, that's going to be taking place at the NEST Summit, is there are solutions. Um, they may not be perfect solutions. They may not be long-term solutions but they are solutions that we need to embrace now in, in order to avoid the devastation um, that is certain to come if we ignore the science. Thank you so much. I wanna be respectful of your time um, and there are no other questions. So um, if either or all of you have um, anything you wanna say before we wrap up, I invite you to make some closing remarks. I, 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 all I'm going to say on the on the closing remarks, well, but firstly, thank you for having me here. Secondly, it's a pleasure to see Jackie in Britain, who we work with in various different guises, um, and and they're, and they're fantastic. Um, just purely from like a practical point of view, um, you know, ne next week is going to be crazy. There will be a lot of announcements. Um, there will be a lot of footage and things that that you'll want to see. And people you want to speak to so i would just say like it, it would be really it, like what i said earlier on about registration on the media stuff and just me forwarding send me an email i'll put you in touch with the media team like doing that this week is going to really help make sure that next week when you see something you want to write about you've got the press release and the opportunity to get a quote and if you're in new york being in the room as you know makes all the difference so i'd love to get that arranged so i think like you know please just you know I'll leave an email address. Climateweeknyc.org is 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 the is the website. You can find most things through there, including all the events we spoke about. Um, and download the app because it came online today and it's great. I'll just add that as well. Um, it's uh, a pleasure to be here with you, Adam, and with you, Jackie, and um, uh, Daphne. Thank you for having us. Um, any of you who are interested in, in attending uh, the NEST Summit, which is on Tuesday and Wednesday um, at the amazing building that Jackie was talking about, um, please come see it live. It really is impressive what they've done. And um, we, would, we would welcome you to, uh, to come attend any and all of the uh, event that you can in person. And if not, please check it out online. Um, we are the, the nestsummit.com. And I would also like to say thank you so much for having me here. Um, we're really looking forward to hosting the NEST Summit again this year. Uh, last year it was virtual and now we get to see some people face to face and we know that that really is so much more special um, when you're really hearing the ideas um, and connecting with people. And so we're really excited to be able to do that, but still offer um, the virtual platform for those who cannot attend in person. Um, for those who are going to be in the area, again, we are doing that tour with Siemens, looking at the prototype of the solar canopy ending up on the farm. You will also see the green roof. So if you're interested um, in attending that tour, uh, please reach out and we'll be happy to, to add you in. Well, um, I think we're out of time. I appreciate um, your, your remarks today and joining us, um, Adam, Britton, and Jackie. Uh, today's briefing was on the record. As soon as a transcript is available, I will send it to everyone who's attended. It'll be also be posted on our website at fpc.state.gov. Um, and I will also be sharing uh, the press kit and uh, your contact information um, uh, as, you've, as you've mentioned. So with that, thank you for joining us and good afternoon. Thanks. Thank Bye. you.